what I love. My, I'm not a great movie director, I'm not an auteur, I'm a storyteller, I'm a craftsman. And uh, I love, beyond anything else, working with the actors and finding the ways of making an actor believe that what they're about to do is the best performance that they've ever given. Richard Attenborough. He was almost 91. He died yesterday. It was a wonderful, long and full life. So in a way, we shouldn't be too sad, but, but uh, we are. His contributions to acting and directing were enormous. One of his films, Cry Freedom, he collaborated with the Heard family, the family, of course, of Ray Heard. Uh, yes, he was a distant cousin of mine, mm -hmm. I think twice removed. Um, a friend of mine who was an editor of an anti-apartheid newspaper in South Africa, Donald Woods, uh, he, he befriended a black leader, Steve Biko, mm -hmm. who was murdered by the security police. And my friend Donald was banned as a communist, which he wasn't. And he had to escape South Africa. And as he escaped, the security police tried to kill his six-year-old daughter by poisoning a T-shirt she was given. So Donald Woods wrote a book about this. And in London, where he escaped to London, Attenborough read this and said, we're going to make a movie. And he called my brother, who was then a famous South African anti-apartheid editor too, and a close friend of Donald Woods. And Attenborough went out and stayed with his wife, with my brother in Cape Town, and developed this great movie, which right. came out in 87, just before apartheid imploded. It's a wonderful and movie. it's a great that, that, movie. It is. That, let's see a brief clip from it now, please. Now, our movement seeks to avoid violence. But your own words call for direct confrontation. For you and I are now in confrontation, but I see no violence. Hmm. Of course, wonderful actors in that movie. Denzel Washington, who was nominated for an Academy Award in mm. that movie. But although that was a fine no. movie, he directed Shadowlands, yes. a wonderful movie, and Oh, What a Lovely War, which was yes. quite iconic in terms of, of uh, the production of new forms of anti-war movies, I suppose. Yes. Gandhi won, well, I don't know how many Academy Awards. Uh, the and Gandhi him... story is a great story. Let's, let's see, uh, again, yes. it's a brief clip. Let's just see a brief see a clip, clip from Gandhi, please. I am a Muslim. Hindu and the Christian and the Jew and so all of you. In this cause, I too am prepared to die. There is no cause for which I am prepared to kill. Hmm. So the movie about Gandhi has a great story and he told us about it. Basically, no one would make the movie. For 20 years, he tried to make it. He couldn't get Hollywood or the British studios interested. So guess what he and his wonderful wife, who's a fellow actress, did? Yeah. They sold their house, they mortgaged it, and they made the movie. It's one of the greatest movies of all time. It only won eight Academy Awards. He got for Best Director, Producer. And guess what? That investment he made with his mortgage money increased 200 times and right. made him a very wealthy person. He was also a wonderful actor. Many people watching now, I know, will yeah. be familiar with the movie The Great Escape. Yes. And there is a scene in The Great Escape where, where the SS yes. or the Gestapo man says yes. to one of the, the British prisoners, good luck. Yes. And I think it's Gordon Jackson who yes. turns around and says, oh, thank you. Yes. Anyway, Attenborough is in that. Yes. He was in Brighton Rock, oh, yes. based on the Graham Greene novel, which is a superb movie, very dark. Ten Rillington Place, yes. which people might not know, but it's about... Uh, a, a serial killer yes. and an he, execution that took place of an innocent man yes. that, that actually pretty much ended the death no. penalty in the United Kingdom. He made loads yes. of comedies, and serious, he dark, also, light. He also played Santa Claus. He did play Santa okay. Claus. That, you name it, he played it. But um, he was a very modest person. Like, I've had some dealings like you with famous actors and stars. Yeah. He was a very short man. He was about five foot two. And the other great inspiration he exercised was on Princess Diana. Yes, this is very he interesting. He helped her overcome her shyness when she was having a bad time with Prince Charles, who's not my favourite yeah. next king. Well, he helped her to speak in he public speak and so on. And uh, he loved her dearly, and uh, he was that sort of person. He was all, his family sheltered Jewish children from Germany yes. during the Second World War. He was a strong campaigner yeah. against apartheid. Uh, he, he, was, he was a very fine man and the best of that generation, I think, a, a, as a writer and, and yep. a producer, director and actor. Uh, in terms of the British film industry, he and, was one of the yep. main people behind it. He resurrected yes. it. And his first role was in 1942, an, a war movie 
directed, I think, by Noel Coward. That mm. was called In Which We Serve. Yeah. So go back to... And he was in two. Jurassic Park as yes, well. Yes, he did it all. <laughs> but um, he's kind of like Homer. When you began the show, he is a storyteller. He doesn't want to be a great Nobel Prize winner. He wants to tell stories very much like Homer told stories about the Greek heroes. Mm. Attenborough told stories about the human condition in a positive Gandhi, very positive. Yeah. Steve Biko, very positive. But well, you know, the, the big mistake, what he realized was you can't bring the dinosaurs back to life. It just leads no. to chaos and terror, doesn't it? And he was very convincing when he played the role of the scientist <laughs> who tries to bring the dinosaurs back. He was a fine actor. So you name it, he did it, but he was modest, caring, and I would sum him up in one word, compassionate. Yeah. Great life, a great man, and we greatly missed, but uh, what a lot he, he, he left behind. Ray, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Michael.